I say, how are you doing today? I am your host, Lacey G. Soldier Turner. And today I have a very special guest with me. She's a mentor, child advocate, parent advisor, public speaker, phenomenal entrepreneur, and much, much more. We got the amazing, wonderful, talented Ariel Biggs. Welcome to the platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome, welcome. So we're going to get into, you know, a couple of things today. But first, where were you born and raised and how was your upbringing as a child? Yes. Yeah, so I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Cochrane Projects to be exact. I uh, uh, was born in the Cochrane and I uh, moved out when I was 17 years old. I stayed in the Cochrane when I, when I was younger. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, is the cockroach cock still up or did they tear everything down? I was they tore the everything down. Yeah, they tore all the high rise buildings down. But yeah, that's where I grew up. So for me, growing up in the Cochrane, it was fun. It was community. Um, it was everything that I needed to be. I played basketball for the Cochrane Center. Um, I had skating um lessons. We had mm -hmm. karate. I learned so many different skill sets at the community center that. I know bad things happen, but that wasn't my reality and that wasn't my upbringing. I lived in a two-parent household and we had um, activities that was um, that was able to guide us and show us that it was more than just the Cochrane. I uh, grew up in the Cochrane, graduate, went to Melville High School, and then I graduated from Melville and I went to college on a basketball scholarship. Nice, they get you hooping. <laughs> yeah, hooping, hooping. Okay, so look for those who've never been to St. Louis. You know, can you tell them about it? They always see the murders and all this. They were the top five. Can you tell anybody who hasn't been here about our city? Um, from my perspective and my point of view, I think we're a creative, innovative city. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you can make it in St. Louis and you've been bred in St. Louis, you can make it anywhere because it's tough to get the respect. But once you got it, you got it. And it, I think it is because we're the show me state and you got to show me. You can't just come to us talking a whole bunch of this, like show me what you can do. And I respect it once you show me because too many people talking. So that's what I feel like when I hear St. Louis we have the number one entrepreneurial startup community in the world. Like people right. move to St. Louis for entrepreneurship. And that's right. why I'm so excited for what I'm planted to do in the city of St. Louis. So that's right. Facts. You just spoke facts. You dropped them jewels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Miss Ariel, you are the founder of Young Biz Kids. Could you explain that? Tell the people what that's about. Yes, so Young Biz Kids is a nonprofit organization that empowers you through financial literacy, but we teach it through entrepreneurship. So we had to figure out something sexy for the kids because if you say you going to this financial literacy class, <laughs> they not have it. They like, that. but if you say, hey, you're going to start a business, they want to start a business because they have all of these wonderful ideas. But then we were able to say, okay, once you start this business, you can't run a successful business without knowing how to manage money. So that's how we were able to sneak that uh, that financial literacy in with them, and they love it. So um, basically, I take a kid's idea or a hobby and I help them to see how they can make money from it and then if they the kids stay with me over time I'm able to show them how they can make a living off of this moving forward showing how it can be sustainable and how it you can grow from it and how you can hire your parents mm -hmm. in your business if mm -hmm. you would like to so I was able to create that. And then um, during that process, we were able to start a day, a national day for young entrepreneurs that's called YBK Day, where we celebrate all young entrepreneurs all over the United States, but specifically young biz kids is in seven states. So those seven states, we go heavy with recruiting kids to participate in this day where we celebrate them for even just having an idea and setting up their business for the first time. Yeah, and I saw, you know, I had did some backstory on you. I saw the video of your son with the lemonade thing when he was saying with the people lining up for the Jordans and the vending machines. I thought that was like amazing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So when I started with him when he was seven years old, uh, he wanted vending machines, but I was like, you, we can't do that. But then <laughs> um, I realized that 
too many of us as parents tell our kids that they can't do something, but mm -hmm. then on the same token, we tell them they can do all things, you know? So it's like, it was a contradiction and it started to hit me. So I'm like, okay, how do I handle this? So I said, you're going to do this uh, vending machine business, but I got to see how much skin you got in the game. So you're going to need to do a lemonade stand first, raise the money, and then we'll purchase the machine. In three days, he made $1,200. And he did set up next to the uh, shoe store, the long line of people, and he killed it. I, I was just <laughs> like, man. <laughs> That's good. Now. So how can people become a part of a young biz? Kid? I know you said this in all these different cities and stuff. How can people be a part of it? Yes, so they can participate in our national day, which is YBK Day. is July 15th. Um, and they can go on our website, which is ybk.org, ybkday.org, and they can sign up for their city or the city that's closest to them. If they're local to the St. Louis community, we have a Young Biz Kids membership where um, they can come and participate in monthly classes to learn about financial literacy, public speaking, PR, how to get into the uh, movie industry, how to become an actor, how to write a book, how to grow their personal mm -hmm. brands and influence, how to work YouTube, like all the things that, that the kids that. say yeah. that they do. I want to be a podcast host. I want to be a gamer. Like all those things, we take it, give them what they want, but we also give them what we know that they need. They need that critical thinking. We know that those, they need those soft skills to be able to speak in front of people, shake your hand, look you in the eye. We give them all of that in giving them the thing that they want. We give them what we know that they need. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The youth, it starts with the youth. Yes. <laughs> so I did see something also where, you know, it didn't say manager, it said momager. You know, you're a momager business coach. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. So a momager is a person that manages their child's brand, business, or whatever they have going on. So I coach moms in how to do that because sometimes we try to hold kids to an adult standard and we as moms have to step in and say, okay, I'm a, I'm their mom and I have their best interest, but I'm also their manager and I'm going to negotiate on their sides. So for instance, when somebody called you and asked you, can your child come and speak or can your child do this and do that? They need that buffer right there so that your child won't be saying yes to anything contracts have to be looked at <laughs> oh, how much money is being involved because some people will say i'll give you twenty dollars the kid will jump for it but we know that that is two thousand dollars and exactly. the reason why they're a momager and a manager because they all get a fee for what they negotiate on their kids behalf so i teach moms how to negotiate on their kids behalf so that they're not left out of the fold that the kid is making money, but you're learning new skill sets as a mom too. You're learning how to negotiate contracts, read contracts. You're also learning how to manage project management, all of the things that people are paid big money to do, but you're the mom, but you're doing mm. this. So you should get compensated in some way, even mm. if it's just 10%. So if the contract is a thousand, you're going to get a hundred dollars, which mm. is not a lot, but we're also teaching our kids that I'm doing this because I'm your mom, but if a mm. manager was exactly. involved, you exactly. would have to pay yeah. that manager. Facts, yeah. So <laughs> how, how can our uh, mothers be a part of that? Is it a, you have classes for that also? I do. So they can go to um, the younginfluencerblueprint.com and they can uh, schedule a time to talk with me. We'll look over what they have going on with their child. And then I can tell them my recommendations on what they should be doing. And then if I feel like we're a good fit to work together, then I would tell them what the next steps are. If I don't feel like we're a good fit to work together, I would tell them like, these are some things that I would do before first and then come back to me because sometimes the parents are just not ready okay. so for instance some kids are seen on the news mm -hmm. or they have a viral moment but just because you have a viral moment don't mean you have a sustainable business model to where you can make exactly. money and grow for it Fact. so Fact. i teach people how to get seen heard and paid meaning you can be seen on tv you can be heard on podcasts and the radio and still be broke I teach you how to be seen, heard, and how to get paid from the moment when you were seen. Okay, okay. Look at that. We got our stuff on point. So <laughs> on, on this journey of yours, you've been doing this a lot. What did what you say has been your greatest challenge? The greatest challenge for me is I am laser focused 
I am, when I say that I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it uh, no matter what's going on around me. So the biggest challenge is being able to <laughs> let people know that I need help when I need mm -hmm. help. Because for me, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it done. And it doesn't matter who's hurt in the process. Like, because <laughs> I know my eyes are on the, you know, on the, on the prize. Yeah, so sometimes yeah. people say, well, Ariel, you said that kind of harsh. But I'm like, but I'm trying to get something done. But it can come off. So that's been yeah. the biggest challenge for me, how to find that balance and delegate when when's needed so that I can have a support team around me that allows me to operate at my optimal level because I trust them. And it all boils down to having trust issues. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that That's what it all boils yeah. down to. So that's been the biggest challenge for me, but I'm working through that. Um, so I'm delegating things. I like to tell people, y'all, now I know this is my baby. So <laughs> my Jesus, this is my baby and I can't trust yeah. it with anybody. So if I'm letting you babysit or if I'm letting you take my baby somewhere, you better take care of my baby. Indeed. You know, so I joke yes. with you, but truly it's my baby and you don't let your baby go with anybody. So you have to make sure you do your background checks. You got to make sure that you check their references. And like I said, we're from the show me state. Let me see that you know what you're doing before you try to come into what I'm doing and create something that you don't even know that work or not, but you're trying something because it's really not yours, you know? So you're not going to play mom and dad with my baby. So no, you're not <laughs> going to do that. Facts. You're going to see that you know what you're doing. So I just like to uh, related to babysitting, you're not going to allow your kid to be babysit or any daycare center or, in, you know, you're going to watch who's take care of your baby. Correct. Facts. You remind me of me. Yes. When I say I would do something, I do it. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So what has been your greatest accomplishment? <laughs> um, to actually go into uh, seven states, to actually have the organization that I had a dream about seven years ago, uh, see it be in other states and see other kids seeing the vision, seeing other parents seeing the vision and flying to St. Louis to get training from me. So mm -hmm. that's been one of the biggest accomplishments. Most people think one of my biggest accomplishments is, is being on Nickelodeon. And yeah, it was a big accomplishment to be on Nickelodeon because I used to watch it growing up and my kids watched it. But for me, the bigger accomplishment is to see those kids really grasping the skill sets and willing to come to St. Louis and go back to teach it to other people. Like that's been one of the biggest accomplishments for me. Okay. So what advice would you give to, you know, a, a youth, young child or somebody who has an idea and wants to, you know, start their own entrepreneurial business? Man, to continue to dream big and write it down, like every vision that you have, everything that you have about that business, write it down and understand that your parents might not understand you in this gift, but this is not for your parents, it's for you. And since it's for you, you have to understand that as long as you write it down, even if it's two, three years later, the right support is going to come around you and you'll be able to pick up from wherever you started from but if you don't write it down you'll never remember that oh i did have that dream until somebody else was doing it mm -hmm. but when you get the right people in your life and connecting with the right people and it's written down you could say oh you know what i got this idea right. so mm -hmm. if you run into like a miss ariel that says she works with young <laughs> entrepreneurs you say let me get my notebook i got mm -hmm. it look i was thinking about this and i was thinking about this for two or three years and i'll say yeah we can get this done in 30 days because that's what i do you see that 30 days up in that 30 days <laughs> money back guarantee now. Just like <laughs> so yeah, I uh, guarantee. No, I, I do okay. send a guarantee and I tell them I can guarantee to get you results, but mm -hmm. I also guarantee that if you keep doing the same thing that you've been doing, you're gonna get those same results. So mm -hmm. you need to hire me or come within my program so that you can see that it's it's not as hard as you think with the person who knows the role, who's been there, who's done it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, so do you have anything coming up that you want to promote what you got going on? I always got stuff coming up. Let's see. Um, the biggest thing is YBK Day. It's July 15th. 
Uh, the goal is to get 75 young entrepreneurs again in one location. And then we want the community to come out and support them and buy from them. Even if you spend a dollar or two with them and take pictures with them and let them know that you support them. Sometimes it's not about the product that they're serving, selling, but it's more about the support that they see in mm -hmm. you so yeah. that it can spark something within them that I'm on the right path. I'm on the right direction, going in the right direction. Um, and that's June 15th, and it's at Harrisville State Community College. Okay. And it is from 11 to 2. What's that, June 15th? I'm sorry, July. <laughs> okay. 15th, I'm sorry. You're going to have July people out there 15th. where they at? <laughs> no, yeah, sorry, y'all. But July 15th from 11 to 2 at Harrisville State University. Okay. So, Miss Ariel, my last question that I love to ask all my guests. When it is all said and done and you are long gone from this earth, what is it that you want the people to know about Ariel Biddies? That I gave it my all. Everything that I had in me, I gave it. I gave it to my city. I gave it to the world. And I'm leaving here on empty because I gave it all. I like that answer. All right, Miss Ariel, I thank you for your time. I will let you know when this article comes out. It's going to come out pretty quick. I know writing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to write it quick. You know what I'm saying? I'll be on my job, and I know writing is going to publish it quick. So we appreciate you from the St. Louis Argus, and you have a good day. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.